So this is Hustable coming to you from a random hotel in Amsterdam. Off Hustable grounds. So yeah, I'm currently in in Europe in Amsterdam. Uh, going to be doing doing a bit of traveling around. Uh, then probably loop back here. So uh, hence why I'm in this random place with this weird thing on the wall. But uh, yeah, so I had to kind of kind of change the setup. So this is this is where we're currently at. I had, I had to leave a lot of uh, some of my favorite synths and equipment behind. But you got to do what you got to do. So I would have started off with a uh, kind of stock instruments and the different things on like Ableton, and then. Uh, you yeah, then got like uh, MIDI keyboards, launch pad, a few, a few other things, and was doing a, a DJ controller and was doing um, kind of live looping and things like that. And then a bit of a slow descent into synthesis, but uh, yeah, got a few kind of crappy things, a few bits of shite that don't really use anymore and barely got any use of it, to be honest, before making my first big purchase. And by by a big purchase, I don't actually mean very big. It's kind of small. One of Mark's favourites. The old Volca keys. You know them, you love them. Everyone's favourite. Kind of from the, the Volca onwards, that's kind of, and especially during lockdown, well, it kind of just expanded slowly and slowly till I had like a ridiculous number of synths. None of which on their own were too expensive, but they definitely add up. I, I will say gas is definitely a real thing. I recently decided that I was gonna, gonna venture off. Do a bit of travels around Europe, so uh, kinda had to slim down the setup. It's kinda what I have now. Just before heading off, I did, I did a, a jam outside, uh, so I was uh, decided I'd kinda keep that same setup so I could do if I want the kind of outdoor jams and I think there's enough to build kind of tracks because uh, what's that I have uh, the model samples is kind of the the brains of the operation so I use that for all the percussion uh, and in a way to kind of to drive the track in terms of need like scenes because the rest whether it's the Volga keys or the old micro freak. Um, I tend to kind of mess around with them, maybe improvise a bit, or they're less kind of structured. The model samples keeps me focused in on uh, kind of what I'm doing and shit. Kind of the main one I'm missing, I'd say, is the the crave, the Behringer crave. I do, do quite like what that can do. Good solid bass sounds, good uh, arps, good leads. But uh, yeah, I had to cut it, unfortunately. But I'll, I'll, that's pretty what when I kind of settle in somewhere. If I have a postal address of some sort, I'll pretty try to get something to send over the the crave. Then, well, as a piano player, I was tossing between bringing this and the what do I have? The Reface CP, which like, I'm a big fan of. But in terms of cutting down the setup, I feel like there's there's more I can do with this because uh, I have a uh, yeah, I kind of use plugins in Ableton, so I'm going to be using this for some key sounds, and then obviously I can drive some soft synths, and then if I feel like it also do longer than 16 step sequences on this, or I do like to also run a Volca, a Volca sequence while also hit, hitting it with a key step sequence. It, it, then they kind of interact and you get like a cool kind of weird thing going on <laughs> then I brought these as well but I might have to leave these with a friend on my travels just because packing light ain't easy and it was a bit of a struggle getting here from the airport I will say so that's kind of like that setup then over here I also have an old DJ mixer uh, do a show for Irish radio every week, so I need to keep this with me, even though this, to be honest, is the most awkward size in terms of packing. <laughs> but you know, does the job. And yeah, then I just have the 
cheap old kind of Behringer interface. And then, well, so use a gaming laptop to kind of drive it all because cheaper than Max and the, you can get like a lot of power in it. Here's the shit of the wires that loads of wires to have more over here. <laughs> Wires are a pain in the hole. Not not the best for wire management. I've only been here a few days, but I had planned on setting these all up. But you know, been busy doing other things. I did actually wake up during the night and this guy kinda of freaked me out. <laughs> can actually see can I get this all running? Put a time lapse on and see if we can make something. should be the setup pretty much. Actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. So I decided to even add in the sound. Activated lights. Um always good for one. Now a studio is complete without some lights. So I just open Mr Ableton. So yeah, this should be the Yeah, so this is the the hot jam that I was doing. Um So like I was saying this is um different drums. So I was here a kick, but it's now some shaker type thing. And some brakes. Uh, I actually quite like chopping up brakes on the model samples. Just have to do it, kind of do it by the number. Then some weird vocal chops. This is actually um, it's actually kind of traditional Irish singing. I was just uh, chopped into a little, chopped into a little. And then we have here, this is just a micro freak doing a nice little sequence. And then yeah, for that live jam I was just there. Uh, sounds a bit mad at the moment, but that's a, uh, I was just using the Falca keys for that. As I said, don't judge my wire management. <laughs> In case you get bored of those, I'm going to try and use the what's called the key step. As a piano player, that's kind of the my favorite uh, plugin. Even though it's not weighted keys, I have weighted keys back home, but can't be carting them around. But uh, yeah, as a uh, kind of yeah, as piano sounds go, like it's the best. It's the most the closest you can get. I kind of feel because you can if you go into the settings. You can you can change the action and everything on it. 
So that's a yeah, piano tech. So if you look at here, the, the velocity curve, you can change and you go through a process so that you can accurately kind of, even, even on a keyboard like this, you'd be able to do it. But yeah, when I'm traveling again, I'll probably, probably just take this and, and leave these two. Just because it's, um, yeah, I'm gonna take it carrying stuff around already. But yeah, so that's, uh, I'm gonna use this as a, like a mixer rather than like a hardware mixer. Uh, so obviously you have your channels and then map, say this to filter and maybe that to reverb and delay. But then also, can't remember if I have it set up on this project, but uh, I can use these as loopers. So yeah, sorry, I think the first one, one of these will be sends to the, to the looper. So if I wanted to, I can basically loop any of these. So then add, add an extra layer, then, then filter and yeah, do whatever else. So at the moment I added that, uh, I've split the channels so that I can do kind of heavier work on the kicks without like overly compressing the, say the, the brakes. So I need to kind of work more on my processing. So say for the kick, there's an EQ because uh, if you have say reverb, the other frequencies kind of leak into it because the reverb is stereo. Bear in mind, I don't really know what I'm doing with most of these. So I have a compressor, a drum bus, two drum buses for this one. More compressor, saturator, and the EQ. This is all kind of done roughly, but the, for the rest of the percussion, uh, you know, the drum bus, glue compressor, a little bit of reverb, flanger, kind of various bits and bobs. Then, Right, so for this I have I had a freak channel. So this is a bit of Valhalla reverb which I think is great. Yeah, I think it was something like that. But yeah, so that's the that's a serious amount of buzz. Which actually on that topic as well as I should say, I have uh, these yokes are a godsend. Got them Cheap one, I think it was Canable, Canable, Canable. A little ground loop isolator because, uh, especially using like USB and stuff, there's sometimes a serious amount of buzz. Can even hear a bit now, it's still going, but maybe that's just a speaker. So, yeah, the plan for the launch control is to, for different settings, have it as, I suppose, like. Oh. Not supposed to be mapped like that, but <laughs> um have the, these for channels on and off, maybe levels, but I do tend to just control the levels on the actual synths. So I'm thinking some effects and some sends for um some sends for the looper so it can work and especially try and loop this. Because yeah, it's something I, I used to do more, but I haven't done it in a good while. Got too lost in the synths themselves, so having a limited setup it will probably be good for getting me kind of back into kind of the power of Ableton and doing more like hybrid setup where I can run a lot of stuff in Ableton. For me particularly, it's it's the loopers, which I, I do always love because that's kind of where I started. Um, so yeah, I've signed them for looping because yeah, I would have started with just. Uh, MIDI keyboard and using a pedal for looping. So yeah, I suppose that's kind of my setup. Uh, I'm only here another night and 
I'm heading out, so I uh, <laughs> probably won't get much use of these here, but I'm going to be bringing what I can uh, on the rest of my travels. So it is a pain in the hole trying to trying to move everything, but uh, yeah, this is what I'm going to be working with for the next pretty few months. So uh, yeah, hopefully I can do some work with it and make some good tunes. Uh, cheers, guys.